Hi everyone and welcome back to Luna Domenica. Today we are going to take a look at the new collection from Lisa Eldridge. I picked up a few stuff from her and also we are going to take a wear test and try out her new foundation which is going to launch soon and she included foundation cards with her uh, orders. So we are going to look into all of that and uh, let's get started. I start with a red lip planner. I start with a red lip planner. Winging out that eyeliner. Luna Dominica. 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 So we are going to start by taking a look at the foundation. And uh, for that I'm just going to clip back my fringe. I already tied back to here. I don't want it to get in the way. And with this foundation card. So this is a foundation card. You get four different shades in your category. And on the back she has a QR code. Which sends you to a testing out foundation shade tutorial by Lisa. Which I think is quite a nice touch actually. And I got the light one set. And you can just take them out like so. I haven't tried any of these before. But here you can see... And here you can see all the shades. So I'm going to try out all the shades here, like Lisa showed in her video. And she has also showed that technique earlier in some of her older videos, I think perhaps eight years ago or something. This is exciting. She did also give tips to how to see your different undertones, like wear something that shows a bit of a cleavage, perhaps your shoulders, like a tank top or something, and stand in direct sunlight so you can see all the different tones in your skin. I have done that in the past, but I'm not going to do it today because it's quite cold here in Norway. We can start off by taking the first shade, just open it like so, and I'm going to take out a little bit and strap it on. Just taking off my earrings. I wanted to dress up a bit for this. Perhaps not the best idea while, while testing out the foundation really because you don't want it on the clothes. So I'm going to take the lighter shade around here and just going to strap this down onto the neck to see because this is in general the best place to test out foundation. Put on quite a lot so you can see. It looks like it matches my neck quite well. I'm a bit more red in, in my face but I like to try to neutralize that. So now we are going to go out, over to the light 2. Now I try that light 1. It's hard sometimes to open these type of packaging things. Now we're going to try light 2 and see. I'm usually the most lightest shade in a foundation range. And oftentimes they don't have light enough shades I feel. So I have the opposite problem, so somewhere with a darker skin. As you can see, that's light 2, light 1. And this one is more yellow, and I think a bit too dark for my skin. And now we're going to go over to 3, and also going to try out 4, which probably both of those are going to be too dark for me. But to see kind of the difference. Oh wow. That is shade 3. So you see 1, 2, 3. And 3 is definitely too dark for me. I mean 2 might work. 1 I feel like is quite perfect with my neck. And 3, you might say that that might be a good summer color. But I don't tan at all. So that's not a shade for me. But you can kind of get the idea. on how the different, the lightest colors in her foundation is. And now we're going over to number 4. Which is the darkest shade. Actually, I think number three might be darker, but this has more of a pinkish undertone again. So you can see it looks a bit darker also than the first two I tried out. So I feel like this one is going to, the lightest one is going to go most into my skin tone. Here you can see the different shades. And to kind of give you a bit of a reference, here through my foundations in 0C and 0CR from Dior and MAC. Both face and body, which you shake. And to give you a reference of the color, I'm going to just take this. With hair, so you can see this one. It's a lot lighter than the darkest colors here, but it has a bit of that paleness in. So I would say that one is pretty similar to the shade 2. And face and body in C0, which is the color that I feel like matches me, me the most. So you can see here, this is a bit more yellow. And my foundation from Charlotte Tilbury, which is the Airbrush Flores foundation, which I also have in the shade 1 Cool. And this is more a creamy, full coverage foundation. This one is the lightest one from Lisa Eldridge. This one is number 2 from Lisa Eldridge. This one is the number 3. And this no is number 4. And here as a comparison you have Dior in 03R. And the 0C face and body from MAC. At the end you have the Charlotte Tilbury in One Fair Cool. So you can see kind of a comparison. Just going to take that off. 
So I think we are going to try out the lightest shade. So Lisa Eldridge likes to apply this with her fingers or with a flat brush. So I think I'm going to try both of those methods. I like to apply my foundation with fingers or more of those kind of fluffier brush stuff. So we are going to do half and half. So fingers, flat brush. And I'm just going to dot this on. It looks like a quite a good match. A bit too pale for some areas where I am more red on my face. But I think that's okay. Okay, really. And I'm also going to look into some of her lipstick, lip gloss and two lip liners that I also bought from Lisa Eldridge I'm going to try out. So I always kind of dot on my foundation with my fingers first, no matter if I'm going to go in with a brush or not. So we are just going to start and blend out you know, in this area where my this side is the fingers side where i applied it with my fingers we're also going to do a wear test try out how this wear throughout the day okay so first look at the fingers side i'm not sure if this is my kind of preference when it comes to foundation i like more of the watery kind of foundation like the face and body from mac but i can see just by applying it with my fingers that it goes a teeny bit into my pores usually to avoid that i go like this and to kind of press upwards and that seems to do the trick here also and a place where my face foundation always look horrible and i actually feel like i do need a bit of coverage there but oftentimes i don't apply anything there because it doesn't look good it's around my nose so around here i tend to be a bit red and have some veins and stuff but foundation doesn't sit well there on me at all it kind of just crumbles and i tried a lot of different things to see if that's going to help but i haven't found anything so now i'm going to conceal that area with my foundation to see if this is going to do the same i mean like, i wouldn't hate on it if it does because I haven't really found any foundation that don't do it. And at the moment it looks quite great around the bit of collecting right in here. Which is where foundation tends to collect on me anyway. So over to the brush side. So I'm going to use this brush. And this looks a bit stained because I did use it with some face paint. But I have cleansed it quite thoroughly so it shouldn't be a problem really. So this feels weird in a way because I haven't really applied foundation with this kind of brush in a long time. But I do like to try foundation sometimes the way that the company recommends you to use it. That was a lot faster. And again, it collects a bit into my pores around here. I would say if I used the Seamless Skin Elevated Glow underneath, if I had used this underneath and put it around my kind of pore area, I don't think it would be a problem because that's what I usually do. And I haven't had it collect that much in my pores with other foundation when I use that product. Okay, it looks better on this brush side in my opinion than it does on the finger side. So now I'm just going to add a bit more and add a bit more of the brush on this side to see how that works out for me. Looks very natural, I have to say. I have actually quite high hopes for this foundation because I'm a huge fan of this Eldritch and she does skin in such a beautiful way. I mean, like, most of the things that I learn about applying foundation and stuff, I learned from her. I actually started doing makeup after watching her tutorials. My pores around here looks better because I did that pushing up trick and I found that a bit hard to do that same as I do with my fingers or on this side. Why don't we do something crazy and try the kind of foundation brush that I normally use on my forehead. So I'm going to take a bit of this brush, this is it Cosmetics, and just dot a bit onto my forehead and blend it out with this one. Bigger fluffier side and see how that looks because she didn't recommend it with this foundation but I'm curious to see kind of how different techniques looks. I would have tried it with a sponge also but I don't own any makeup sponges really. With her perhaps to see. Understand why she wouldn't recommend a fluffy brush like this. Because I feel like it gives the foundation a bit more texture. Again, I don't know how well this camera... Ooh, that's close. I don't know, can you see around here? So this side is done with a flat brush. This side is done with my fingers. This is done with a fluffy brush. What do you think? Which side is best? Let me know. I'm going to go in with the same foundation and try it out as a concealer and see how it looks underneath the eyes. I'm going to pat it on. The pat on a bit onto the other side also, but blend it on the brush side with my brush. <laughs> but it's not really that glowing foundation. It's more kind of demi matte. And do the same. Oh, I haven't used this brush underneath the eye in a long time. So that felt very unusual. I haven't done this. Okay, so again... 
Here you can see it as a concealer. Finger side, brush side, brush side, finger side, fluffy brush side. <laughs> My phone is probably not decided now. I'm confused. Just going to zoom me back out and hopefully I'm not going to go completely white. Which sometimes happens when I zoom myself out. Okay, so that's the foundation. So now I'm going to apply some more Lisa Eldridge products. I'm going to apply a bit of blush because I feel a bit washed out now that I've evened out my skin tone. And I'm going to go into my only brush by Lisa Eldridge, which is this one. This is Ice and Glow and Livening Blush. And I really love this color. It's quite great color and you don't need much. So I would say it's actually my favorite favorite cream blusher because of how little I need to get both my cheeks but I don't like the packaging because mine exploded hair off which you can see. So her limning blushes didn't restock at her restock and new shades release and that might be because of the packaging I think because she might try to fix that. Might but I think it's more than just me who <laughs> experienced that really. So this shade is super kind of natural on me because I usually get this color when I'm training and <laughs> blushing her I'm just going to add a teeny bit. I think actually, although I like to use this both underneath and on top, I think I'm going to go into the Elevated Glow now on top and see how this works for the foundation. I was curious on how this looked without the Elevated Glow also because... So applied a bit with my fingers and also blended out with a brush on this side. And here's just with my fingers which gives me a lot more glow. So on to what I bought from this Eldridge. I bought two new True Le Velvet lipsticks and one new lip gloss and also two of her uh, lip liners. Ironically I actually bought two lip liners that doesn't match with the lipsticks that I bought but I have a lot of her lipsticks already so it's going to match with some of the things, stuff that I have. So you see here are all my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. Both the Luxurious Lucent and the True Velvets. And I have quite a few of her lip glosses also. So the shades that I bought was True Velvet in Cinnabar and Intrigue which was two of the new colors and I bought the matching lip gloss in Cinnabar and I bought two other lip liners. I have one from earlier because I bought a set last time I ordered from her which included a lip liner and this one is in blush and I have done a full tutorial on how to apply the lip gloss, the lipstick and the lip liner. Super close off if you like that stuff. So I linked to it here and I got the color Midnight and Jazz and also but you can set, set them next to each other and it will be the same. So let's start with the lightest color shall we? And this is in three and I was actually quite intrigued, no pun intended, when I saw this color because she talked about it as kind of a very light, lightest color in her collection and quite 60s and a little bit 60s and it's the lightest color so it's lighter than her velvet fawn which was the lightest color until now. I have that one also which is a bit more brown and a bit more 90s according to Lisa and here you can see those two together so you can get a feel and it has this kind of lovely velvet texture around it. I mean like I have such a hard time using Lisa Eilish lipstick sometimes. I'll, at least the first time I have a hard time using it because I love when it's in this kind of perfect form and you can see all the no lip marks on it at all but it takes me so long before I try to actually bring myself to try them on because I thought it was so beautiful. So let's do this. Ooh, I like this color. So here you can see Velvet Intrigue. God, I'm going to use this color so much I mean <laughs> and I'm also going to do a swatch on the hand so you can see the color. Here you can see the color. Here's on me. Before I bought the new shades that I bought now, I have applied all my velvet lipsticks and posted it on Instagram so you can see if you're curious about any of the other shades. I have a lot of them so check that out if you want. The link will be in the description as always. And I also have a short where I put on all my Desilish lip products. It's so just going to take this off. So let's try the Velvet Cinnabar and then we are going to apply the gloss on top of it. So here you can see, and she announced this color, I was like wow, this looks so gorgeous and like color that I like, I love red lipstick. And also it matches my top very beautifully. This is collaboration between Holweister and Edvard Munch, which is a Norwegian artist, the most famous Norwegian artist ever lived, I think. He was the one who painted Scream. This color. I know what I'm going to wear for Christmas this year. Mmm. 
hjärta av det. Han är svartsutt om mig här så du kan se att det är en trygg och cinnabar. Här är det om mina lips. And I'm going to apply the lip gloss on top. I worn this already without anything underneath and this is such a gorgeous color. It's a bit lighter than the lipstick and I feel like for every day it would be a perfect color for me because it matches my hair quite well. <laughs> so if you red hair, this is a color for you. And it gives such a punch when it's applied over the lipstick. Just swatch it also so you can see. And her lip glosses are actually quite pigmented, but you can share them a bit more out if you wish. I love this lip. This goes so perfectly with my top. And for the lip liners, which you probably want to hear about also, I got Midnight, which is this very dark, vampy color. And this has a matching lipstick, which I don't have. And I applied this one the other day and posted it on Instagram. So I will link that down below if you're curious about how this one looks like on me. Which is such a gorgeous color. And for the lip, other lip pencil I bought, I which was this one, which is Jazz. Which is going to go perfectly with my velvet Jazz lipstick. Which you can see, you can see those two together. And I'm also going to swatch the lipstick for you so you can get an idea. Lip liner next to it. So here you can see this one is the lip liner. This one is the lipstick in velvet jazz. And on top here is the new velvet cinnabar which I'm wearing. Which you can see as comparison is a light, it's lighter and more brown in and more orangey. But we also have velvet dragon from her collection. Which one of her orangey reds she just fabulous red. You can see that one as a comparison to her lipstick. You can see this is well Dragon, this one is the new Cinnabar. So you see it's a bit darker than this one and has more brown and not as much orange. It's a bit more orangey than this one. So I'm going to try out this lip liner a bit to line because I do like to line a bit after effects and I also like to do a bit of a darker lip liner than lipstick. I usually do this before I add the gloss, so I done a teeny bit of lining around the edges. And as you can see, this is the result. And I think you can kind of play a bit with lip liner. Sometimes I would say that even this one would look quite good with this look if you have more of an ombre look. I like to experiment quite a lot with different kind of shades together and she has a lot of different beautiful shades. And now they are available as lip liner also. And as you probably could tell, I have already done my eye makeup. I did that before I came on camera. This is just a very simple makeup which I like to use when I'm wearing. Lipstick. And here the hair is going down. Pose, pose, pose. And also can be idea to blot kind of the inside. I forget. It's so long since I've worn that much red lipstick because of COVID. So here's the finished look. I think I might add a bit more color into my face with the blusher. And I'm going to wear this for the rest of the day. And do a bit of a check-in to see how this foundation lasts. So if you're interested in seeing the lasting powers of this foundation, just keep on watching. Hi! So here you can see how the foundation looks. I've worn it for about a while. I'm not that good at keeping an eye on the clock really, but you can see. So this is the side where I did it with my fingers and this this is the side where my I did it with a brush. And here you can see the lipstick. It's not going to last as long the lipstick. I haven't touched that one up, but my lip gloss is not going to last as long as if it's just a lipstick. So here you can see I'm standing by my window. Hi, so now I'm in my room for my second check-in. And this is just how it looks with my light ceiling light. I'm going to turn on my filming lights so you can see me a bit more and this is how the foundation looks it's 9 p.m and here you can see the this is the side that i applied with my fingers this side i applied with a brush i haven't touched up anything I haven't touched up my lipstick and as you can see it lasts quite well even though i've written some wraps with rain there meeting it and so here you can see the lips 
thank you for the gloss. The gloss bag with had the matching lip liner underneath. But considering that I had a gloss on top, I actually quite impressed to have well this lasted, and I know that this lipstick lasts quite well. My eyeshadow lasted also with very great, and I really do love this eyeshadow with any lip color really. So if you want to see a tutorial on this very easy eye look that will work with any lip color, just let me know. So I just want to add a bit more of the lip gloss. So there you go. And now that I put it down, you might see my skin a bit more. I got this new eyeshadow by Linda Halberg. I think I'm going to add a bit of this into the inner corner to kind of add a bit more of a party effect. And this is kind of a great thing. I would say to use any shadow like this to kind of add a bit to any look if you want a bit more party effect. This shade Supernova. This will be my easy kind of day to night with Lisa Eilish products. I don't think I need to touch up anything more but adding a bit more lip gloss and a bit more on the eyes. So have a wonderful day. Enjoy this party season and have Halloween or where in the part of season we are, as we say in Norway, Halibra. I start with a red lip liner, I start with a red lip liner, winging out.